Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, uh, following on of a series of volume slices and chills three. And uh, today we're looking at a particular shape. It's called the torus, like a bit of like a donut, I suppose. Uh, and we're going to be rotating um, a circle around the x and y axis. Okay. We'll be doing it the same as before. We'll be looking at the the seeds uh, and growing the volume. Well, these are the seeds are actually volume volume elements. And from the volume elements, we can actually grow what's called the total volume. Uh, okay. And again, obviously, if it's if we're slicing, remember uh, the uh, the bar is always perpendicular to the axis of rotation, and if we're shelling, the bar is always actually parallel to the axis of rotation. Okay. So let's actually just have a quick look at what we're going to be doing. Um, okay. Here we have the circle. Now I can change the center of the circle anyway, but we're going to be looking at a general circle. I'll just show you. I can change the circle. Uh, we can actually move it around a little bit. Um, but basically, what I've got the, the surfaces on. Uh, so I'm just showing you what's happening. We're going to be generating. You can see here the. Okay, these are the two donuts around the x and y axis. Now I can actually. Change you can see here change change the position of the circle, but really um, we're going to be looking at a, a general circle uh, which has um, center A B and radius. Now I'll just increase the radius a little bit. Okay, but basically these are the shapes we're going to be looking at uh, trying to find the volume of. Okay. Okay. So the idea is we put the bar in again. Uh, you can see here we are looking at a particular circle, which is going to be uh, x minus a or squared plus y minus b or squared equals r squared. Okay, we know that. Hopefully, we know that has a center a b and a radius r. Okay, and uh, we're going to be rotating it around the x and y axes. Okay. Now we will uh, encounter a few uh, tricky integrals on the way. Um, we're going to have to use the uh, ideas of odd and even functions, odd and even, well, as applied to integrals as well. We're going to have to use um, also some trig substitutions, especially when we do the trig substitution for cos squared. Hopefully, we all know that's a half of bracket 1 plus cos 2 theta. Oh, that's cos squared theta is equal to a half of 1 plus cos 2 theta. This is the substitution we, we're going to be using. Okay, now. Uh, I've actually uh, uh, divided it up into two semicircles, actually, in some cases, uh, the top half and the bottom half. But um, you can see that's where the f and the g are, the two different functions there. OK, well, first let's do some slicing around the x. OK, so if we want to slice around the uh, x-axis, first of all, we put the bar in, uh, and you can see it's it perpendicular to the x-axis in this case. Well, you'll, you will see uh, the bar is, in this case, a, b, and uh, has, uh, well, a couple of different radiuses. Its height, obviously, uh, is uh, going to be the difference in the two radiuses, and we'll be using that for shells. But you can see here the radius, um, or the little radius in this case, is, uh, uh, you can see here, little radius is b minus the square root of r squared minus x minus a all squared. OK, that's under the square root sign. And the big radius, you can see, is b plus the square root of all that thing, uh, as, as before, uh, r squared minus x minus a all squared. OK, it's just rearranging the uh, circles equation. OK, we're going to also use uh, the difference of two squares here. Uh, r squared minus, well, big r squared minus little r squared, you can see here, can help us sometimes because big R plus little r is just 2b in this case, and uh, big R minus little r is actually two lots of the square root of uh, r squared minus x minus a all squared. OK, so that's going to help us a little bit with our integration. OK, uh, well, how, we, how will we go about this? Well, the first thing is we know it's a slice, so we use the slice seed. Delta v equals pi big R squared minus little r squared delta x, you can see here. Now, where are we moving from? Well, we're moving along the x-axis. Let's have a look. Um, you might if you want to go back and have a look, but it's from x equals uh, a minus r up to uh, 
x is equal to a plus r and we've uh, already done the, the calculation of uh, big R plus little r and big R minus little r and we're going to use um, you can see here uh, when we put that in uh, we're going to basically uh, well use the uh, well, I guess it's a property of an even integral uh, about from uh, a minus r to a plus r. Okay, uh, is two lots of the integral from a, which is the middle point, to a plus r. Okay, now this integral itself, well, we don't even have to worry about doing, uh, thank goodness, it's uh, just a simple um, quarter of a circle, one quarter pi r squared. Okay, you can see here it's. Um, it's a circle of radius r. It is sitting at uh, what uh, zero a as the center, and um, from a to a plus r, you might like to draw that up. But basically, it's just going to be a quarter of a circle if you have a look at that. And uh, we can just sum that straight in and get the volume: two b pi squared r squared cubic units. And obviously, we'd expect the same uh, volume if we did the, this uh, calculation by shells, which we're going to be doing. And the integration is actually a bit more complicated. Okay, um, now it slices around the y-axis, okay, um, well, let's actually uh, have a look. Well, okay, um, let's just have a quick look at what we just did. Um, okay, here we have our slice around the x-axis. Okay, I'll just show you basically what we did. We're obviously slicing, uh, you can see the bar there, CD is, is moving Okay, uh, up the x-axis, but basically you can see here, it's just a, a series of washes. Uh, this is, uh, okay, we've done these calculations, but we can just basically have a quick look at what we just did. Okay, we will actually um, put the trace on, and I'll uh, try and show you. Um, let's actually put the trace on, and I'll try and uh, scribe out this shape. I've got to do this reasonably slowly. Okay, hang on. Let's go it over a few times. Okay, so what we've actually done, um, let me just have a quick look here. Put it on. It's, uh, okay. I think it, there was a slice. It's, oops, oops. You can see here. I did this fairly roughly. You can see the slices are not terribly. I can actually smooth this out. I'll just uh, draw that. Okay, yes, we can actually smooth this out a little bit. I'll just try and smooth this out a bit more. Just put a few more slices in. There we go. Okay. Just because I've done it fairly quickly. I think I'll put a few more slices in over here too. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. So um, we can actually have a look at this from different angles. Oops. Uh, it's not disappeared. That's interesting. Okay, maybe it's better just to uh, just have a look at it like this. Have a look. At, okay, and um, as it comes around again, I'll, I'll just see if we can spot those. Oops, I took it back a bit. Have a quick look at these uh, slices. Okay, there they are. You can see there's lots and lots of slices in this particular shape. And I could actually get them a bit closer together if we needed to, but this is just a, just a demonstration of what we're doing. Okay. Okay, we can see here this, that volume was uh, 2b pi squared r squared. Okay, it wasn't too bad. We used the quarter of a circle idea fairly easily. Okay, we are going to do uh, some slices around the y-axis now, and uh, well, the, the radiuses are going to obviously change. You can see here the big radius and little radius. Uh, we are slicing around the y-axis now as opposed to the x-axis. Uh, we've got a few things there. A big R plus little r is now 2a. And you can see here the width of obviously is delta y. But we're actually moving well, the bar being perpendicular to the y-axis actually moves up and down the y-axis has uh, width delta y. So as you know, we need functions of y in our integrals. And um, okay, 
again a similar sort of idea use the volume uh, seed uh, delta v for a slice delta v equals pi big r squared minus little r squared in this case the width of the bar is uh, y so it's delta y or if you like the width, width of the bar is actually delta y a small change in y and we are now going from y equals b minus r up to b plus r and you can see here with some calculations uh, you take the limiting value and you end up with the integral uh, pi from b minus r to b plus r for a square root of r squared minus y minus b all squared dy and uh, we're going to double up from b to b plus r and use the, the quarter of a circle idea again now you can see here the volume is just 2a pi squared r squared okay Okay, well here we are, slicing around the y-axis, so I'll just uh, move the slice now, hold on, here we go. Here we're slicing around the y, you can see here the washer shapes, different radiuses, okay. The bar, yeah, EF, uh, moving up the y-axis, making the event functions of y in the integration. Okay, alright, now let's actually try and put the trace on, and let's uh, try and uh, sculpture out this shape. There we go. reasonably slowly otherwise we get fairly big slices okay all right so let's actually um, have a look now okay Ooh, there the slices were they're not too bad this time actually I have to have a good look back again okay there they are you can see here there's quite a few of them and there are a few little gaps which I could smooth out a bit but this is just give you a bit of an idea of what's happening okay um, we can then uh, we're now trying to do the in integration um, this view, uh, lots of different views you can actually uh, uh, I'll put it back to home home view okay all right so let's actually go and have a look okay at the integration here um, and um, you can see here as I said before it's the same basically using the uh, quarter circle idea okay okay we're going to move on to uh, shelling shortly uh, so let's have a look um, okay now what is the difference between a slice and a shell well uh, as you know uh, slicing uh, yeah, the bar is uh, perpendicular and shelling it's parallel to the axis you can see here we now have just a radius which is normally going to be x or y okay in this case we're shelling around the x-axis it's going to be uh, y okay and uh, basically because the bar is what our distance y from the axis and uh, you can see here we just we're going to move that up uh, the y-axis so everything's going to be functions of y the bar has a width delta y okay and uh, we're going to have to try and um, basically uh, get a diff well try and work out what is the height or if you like uh, when we flatten out these shells you remember they're rectangular prisms and uh, their length is the circumference okay um uh, their okay uh, width is in this case delta y and the height is actually just the length of the bar you can see a b um, and you can see uh, let's try and get one of these pens working um, okay so you can see here we have to do a bit of a calculation here for the height um, and uh, obviously it does eventually get to here let's see if I can make this it's supposed to be able to make this circle bigger if you uh, uh, there we are uh, huh, there's a bigger circle or well, ellipse actually in this case but uh, H you can see here this is the actual uh, length of the bar okay in the case obviously we are developing everything from the Okay, the shell volume C, which is basically delta V equals 2 pi R H, uh, in this case delta Y. And you can see here, we've actually uh, worked it out, helps us a little bit with our integration. Let's have a look. Oops. Okay. Ah, what's happening here? I'm going the wrong way. Hold on. Okay, well, here we have the right page now. I, 
Uh, and you can see when we are doing shells, okay, we have okay, the volume C as usual, uh, delta V equals 2 pi R H, in this case delta Y. And we've got R is Y and H is what we worked out before. Uh, now we have to do a little bit more work, okay, on our integration, actually. Um, before they were just quarter circles, but now we've, with that Y at the front there, yeah, basically, well, it means we need to do a, what's called a trig substitution. Um, and if you let y minus b equal to r sine theta, uh, okay, dy is equal to r cos theta d theta. You see the bounds, okay, the y bounds, we'll have to change to theta bounds. Uh, you can see here, I went through that process. Uh, uh, theta minus pi on 2 on the bottom, and up the top, it's uh, pi on 2. Okay, so you can see here now a, our integral, okay, uh, turns into a bit more complex, uh, or much more much more complex integral, you could say. Okay. Now, okay. What do we have to do here? Well, we can simplify it a little bit because we know that uh, sine and cos, uh, are, well, uh, cos squared is actually even, sine theta is actually odd, so the product of an odd and even function is an odd function. So th we have can use the properties of an odd integral odd function integral, if you like, from minus pi on 2 to pi on 2 being 0. Okay, well that's going to simplify things nicely for us and just drop us out that um, b squared r squared cos squared theta part which we're going to need to uh, integrate. And uh, okay, this is going to be standard uh, trig substitution here for cos squared. You can see here half 1 plus cos 2 theta. You've got to, um, and actually I've doubled up the uh, the integration from 0 to pi on 2 now, instead of minus pi on 2 to pi on 2, you can see here, using some properties of even function integrals. Okay, uh, and after done doing the substitution, okay, we, um, let's actually uh, have a quick look over here. This is, uh, this is, um, you can see uh, we've got the 4 pi b r squared, and we've got to integrate the 1 up to theta and the cos 2 theta obviously is uh, sine 2 theta on 2, and we need to evaluate this, which you can see here, okay, it's not too bad, and uh, basically it gives us um, this uh, 2b pi squared r squared cubic units, uh, as we would have got for slicing around the uh, x-axis, okay. We're going to go back and have a look at that. Okay, so let's actually uh, have a quick look at this. Okay, here we have the shell around the y-axis. Let's actually just uh, move the shell. Here we are, this is the, okay, the shell. You can see here, I'm just moving the bar CD. Now notice the bar actually is going to have uh, I think this delta x, so therefore we need functions of x. Okay, now let's actually try now, um, we'll put the trace on for the surface, and uh, See if I can I'll just try and make lots and lots of cylinders. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Okay, now that it's fairly rough, but maybe sometimes it's probably better to be a little bit rough to so you can actually see these cylinders. Um, okay. We can see those cylinders there. Okay forming the shape. You can, if you look at this way, you can see how rough they are. I can actually, uh, I can actually, I just try and fill these in a little bit so better. Uh, okay, just a little bit here and there. I could, should make the steps a bit finer so we can actually uh, have a look at these. But basically, um, you can see here the shape is made up of a lot of cylindrical shells. Now this is a torus. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. This is uh, okay. The result of our integration: two uh, b pi squared r squared. Okay. This is uh, shells around the x-axis. We're now going to go on to shells around the the y-axis. Okay. And you can see here, if we're going to do a shell around the y-axis, we're going to need basically the radius now, which is now x. The bar is moving along the uh, x-axis with delta x. I can need functions of x. 
okay um, you can see here also we've got I've actually done a few calculations for the height uh, you can see here this is okay the height okay this is we're going to use this in the volume element obviously and we know the R is just in this case uh, X and the uh, the height you can see here is this expression here we need to substitute all this into the integration okay okay so let's have a quick look all right well again we're going to need to do um, a substitution a trig substitution okay we're going to get basically because that x at the front of the square root sign there um, and we're going to need to uh, let x equal well x minus a i think the easiest way is x minus a equal r sine theta dx is r cos theta d theta we're going to need to change the bounds um, the x bounds at the moment from a minus r to theta bounds uh, the bottom one is now minus pi on two and the top one uh, is actually pi on two and again we're going to get this reasonably complicated integral here but again uh, we've got the, the properties of the odd and even functions <coughs> Okay, well, as before, uh, that um, I'll just show you um, this part here. Okay, this part is going to, be, because it's a product of an odd and even function, and the bounds, you can see, uh, oops, um, the bounds, I'll just try and move this across. Okay, pi on 2 minus pi on 2. Okay, because uh, we can use those properties of integrals, okay, uh, odd and even functions and it, the actual uh, integrations of those we can see that that's actually zero because it's actually ends up being an odd function and the integration from so a to minus a uh, would be zero okay and um, again we've got to do the uh, substitution you can see it drops out um, at uh, this one here the cos squared one okay and hopefully a bit of experience with integration we know that we have to do this uh, uh, substitution uh, uh, okay I'll just to try to make it a bit bigger that's the substitution there for cos squared and obviously we're going to need to integrate that uh, and you can see here eventually getting um, to a pi squared r squared cubic units now obviously shelling around the y-axis or slicing around the y-axis we should get the the same volume as we did okay we'll just have a quick look uh, finally at uh, this with GeoGebra 5 uh, in 3d it's pretty amazing well okay here is our uh, let's see if we can uh, have a quick look at some different views oops don't think it like that uh, it's, it's depending on Okay, this is our uh, shells around the y-axis, and uh, you can see here again. Okay, they shells. Uh, you should be able to see the slices if they are slices this way, but we turn it back this way. Uh, uh, might even try and uh, see if I can actually get the three D rotation tool up. Uh, I'll take it off the. Uh, okay. So I need to uh, just create. Create the shape again. Okay, oops, here we go. Okay. Well, okay, uh, I have actually changed, tried to change the view in 3D so we can actually see these uh, shells a bit better, but it's, yeah, you can see them on the end here. Just try to look down the y-axis a bit. Okay, there we are. Okay, well, uh, look, I think that's all for today, and thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.